So I'm out in Middlesbrough in one of the nightclubs. Frankie and all them was there, my mates and that, the way that's the, the, the island and all them, they're all, all in the door. Uh, we used to go in the, the nightclub and everything, I used to run the door for, for um, Tracy and I can't remember the, 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 the his name now. One of the Falklands was Barry had the other place, Brian Faulkner, wasn't it? I think, yeah. So I'm running the club for it, all the park end lads are coming in, all these uh, group of lads are coming in, just fucking taking the piss. The dog would have scared of them anyway. Fucking, I've gone in, I've got the, I've got the dog. I used to get like 300 quid a night for them. Three, sorry, 300 quid for the two nights. I used to just go in, do what I want, and I used to have the ecstasy in there, literally people selling. Anyway, fucking one night, I mean, um, I had lads, lads going, who are you looking at? And I'm with a little Keb Hour. Keb Hour. I always say that the best fighter ever around the year was a lad called Keb Hour. Pound for pound, he was the best fighter ever in Teesside. Better than Duffy, better than me. Better than all of us, he was the best. Pound for pound, you would not want to fight that fucking lad. He would fucking fight. I remember him fighting at, uh, at Pakistan, only about six foot four, for 18 stone. Kevin was only about five, six or something, five, seven. And he was friends with Viv Grimm. Viv Grimm used to spar, uh, spar with him, uh, in, like, uh, go in the bag with him and everything in, in Durham, when he was in Durham jail. And my little mate, little John, he used to, he used to go with him. And look, Kevin had three, four fights for Lee. They'd say, oh, you mean you want to one? He'd go outside and he'd leave a six foot fucking two, 15 stone. He was, Kevin was about uh, fucking 11 to 10 and a half stone, something like that. I tell you what, he could fucking fight for fun. He couldn't have to take a shot. He wasn't scared of no one, but he was the nicest kid. Quick story. A kid went up and sprayed paint all of his car, young kid. And he came out, he bought a new car, lovely kid. And the man went, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, because he had a reputation, Kevin. He wouldn't back down. He went, oh, kids will be kids. About three grand with the fucking damage to the car. He just bought the top of his car. He went, oh, kids will be kids. He said to the man, he was just a like, nice lad. And he, he's not here now, he's passed away. But Perry, his mate, was there that night. Perry can prove the story. He knew this fucking lad, he could fight this lad. He was a boxer and his brother. So his, his brother's still alive now. Two top boxers, two top boxers from Salters Girl. Um, really tough lads. Anyway, he's fucking, he's had me up for a fight. And I thought, who's he talking to? He's not talking to me. He can't be me. He's fucking talking to him. Anyway, I looked at him. He's fucking trying to have a go. Anyway, he's fucking, I'm talking to you. He said, anyway, I fucking, I, I hit him, I butted him, and I hit him the left hook. And I nodded him and punched him at the side. No, I, I bang, bang, two shots. Anyway, I bit the fucking, I've split his nose wide open. He's, at his ch ch cheekbones cracked here and he's, the bone's gone through his nose and through the top of his head here, so he's been rushed into the office. He's gone to see his brother down the bomb one. He said, who's done that to you? Who the fuck's done that? I'll fucking kill him. He went, Brian Cockley, oh, you, you must have deserved it. Brian wouldn't have bit you for now. Because he knew how good a fight I was. Anyway, the fucking lad um, went to the hospital. The, the doctor said to him, half an inch more, he'd have been dead. He would, would have killed you because it was right up here. And he went through his, it snapped his bone here. It went right through his fucking nose and through, through his head here. And uh, right through his fucking, the bone was protruding. Fucking should have seen the state of him anyway. Fucking, everyone was like, fucking hell. And it was only like, bang, bang, the two, two shots. And little Kev, I was like, fucking hell, Brian. Fucking unbelievable, that speed to you for your size. I was 23 stone or something at the time. And Perry went, unbelievable. I said, one second he was there and he was just gone. He said, unbelievable. And then about another five or six lads come over. I went, do you want to go in anyway? They just fucking, they got him and picked him up at first. And he woke, he got up. And he come back over to me. He come back over to me. About 20 minutes later, he come back. Maybe 30 minutes later, he come back. He went, oh, can I just go and say sorry to Brian? I didn't realise it was him. And I'm really sorry. No, so he's come in and shook my hand. He was that fucking drunk. He didn't know where he was fucking at. And um, he wasn't a bad kid. About four weeks later, he got stabbed to death. He, he, had another, he done the same thing with another lad. But the lad had a headlock. And the lad fucking stabbed him to death about 30 times. For a poor fucker. He's not in long gone. So it's just so sad, isn't it? So... Yes, people I've had fights with, and I've had a go and they've shook hands with me. Some some people I've had fights with and been best of friends since, like me and Lee Duffy was. And you, you know, you get that sometimes you have a fight with someone, you end up shaking hands and you're best of friends and you just have a drink and move on. But now it's all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put your windows through and come around and stab you. Or you get dibbies like tinfoil, I'll fight you on the internet and all that. Couldn't fight sleep, never had a fight in his life. And then soon as you've got to fight them, he's got the police on you. They're, they're, the, they're the worst in the world now, them people like that. But yeah. Um, just another story in your day guys, just uh, hope you're okay, but don't forget to push the like buttons, um, the, the YouTube channel's flying, um, just been on the phone today to, for a documentary, um, going to be doing a two part documentary, it's going to be on the national telly, not just these tin pot ones that get made in Teesside, a proper national like, like McIntyre ones like that, 
a massive, massive, massive you know, documentary and a massive, massive company, one of the biggest, not as big as the BBC, but close to them. Uh, and uh, definitely, definitely, it's, it's getting made. We've been on, I've done the phone to the lady twice now. She's going to phone me back and uh, she definitely wants to do this documentary with us. So I'm not in at all, obviously, it's about someone else, but I'm going to be featuring in it and giving my views on what we're talking about. So that's on the up and coming. The movie is getting done. The movie's done as we speak, as I told you, this is uh, Birmingham. It's been made by a lad down, the, down that way. There's quite a few gangster lads from uh, what you know in, in the movie. There's a lot of top actors in it. As, they're not top actor, but act, professional actors, sorry, I'm, I'm looking for the word, there in the movie as well. So I had a great time. Me and Manyok, I love Manyok. Closest person to me, Manyok, he's uh, brilliant. He's he's always there for me. He took me down there and we got there and we did six hours of filming. We were there all in 12 hours. But I only, I only did about four or five minutes, maybe six minutes acting, probably I'll be in it maybe four or five minutes, but I'm still in the movie, and that's what I told you, not like the idiot who keeps saying about the Paul Sykes one, it doesn't even exist. This movie's done and made and finished. Uh, the trailer's come out next month, so you'll be able to see me in the trailer. Uh, they've contacted me again, they said, we want you to do, the, we're going to make another one next year. This is Birmingham 2. So that's it. that second one's going to get made as well. And in that, I'm going to have a, a major role in that one because I'm now getting fitter, as you can see. I'm getting my strengths coming back. with balance my neck, so everything's moving good now. So pivot and move, pivot and move. <laughs> Remember that idiot. So yeah, so yeah, thank you for listening to me. Another story in a day. Plenty more to come. But loads, you've got to remember, people always make these stories up. No, I'm not. If these people can, the people who the doors, and Jeff Robinson, I've just mentioned all them, and, and Kooky and John Watson and... Um, people like Gary Russell and Mark Johnson and Haddish and Ginger, Kev Scott, Kev, Kev uh, Kilty, um, Little John from Millsborough. Oh, Little John, I keep forgetting Little John. All these people work the doors John Black, Steve Corval, Benny McDevitt. Um, there's that many. Uh, what was the other one's name? There's loads of Red Cap. Big Bob, he's not here now though, but he, he was a great lad. Um, Big Craig from Millsborough there. Um, um, Bushby's, the, the sons are still here. I used to work with Norman. Kitter and Jason Bushby are still here. They used to work, they, they used to work. Big Pen, another great lad, worked the doors. Charlie Chandler, another fantastic lad from Red Car. All good friends with George Fawcett. Um, loads and loads and loads of people. So, yeah, and thanks for listening to me. Uh, more stories about on the doors and in the day what I did. As you know, I worked 30 odd days on the doors. Yeah, I'm 20 year old to 50 odd, 50, 50 till I think I was 53 before I packed it in the doors and then I was still taxing right up to then as well so it's 30 odd years of taxing and then I was also out every day you've got, I've got loads of stories with Speedy to come and all Mark Speedy Ormsby another lad another one who's dead 20, the pe 20 people that I taxed with are dead now 20 of them have, have gone they've all gone all dead uh, I'm the only one left out of them all so and the other ones have died of natural causes as well they've gone to jail for life so it's a dangerous game being a tax man so don't do it See you soon. God bless you all. Don't forget to push the like buttons.